Hey guys, today we are looking at 7.2, which is all about multiplying polynomials. In 7.1, we talked about what a polynomial was, and then did some addition and subtraction. So today we're looking at that next operation, which is all about multiplying polynomials together. So we've done a couple of these already, uh, mainly distribution. Distribution is a type of multiplication. Um, it's one of the methods that allows us to multiply polynomials together. It's the simplest one because it's when a polynomial is multiplied by a monomial. So we're going through and going to be multiplying our monomial, our single term, into our polynomial. So we're going to be multiplying each of those together. So we've got 3x times 2x squared, which gives me a 6x to the third. 3x times negative 5x, which is a negative 15x squared. And then 3x times 3, which is a positive 9x. Um, here, just make sure when we're multiplying the individual terms together, we're following those exponent rules. So our, our product rule tells us that we multiply the coefficients together. And then for our exponents, we add those together. So that's why 2x squared times 3x. 2 times 3 gives me 6. x to the first times x squared gives me x to the third because you add those exponents together. We can use uh, distribution to multiply a binomial or multiply by a binomial by distribute. This is supposed to be distributing. Distribute ing. Distributing each term. So that was distributing distribution up above. That was by a monomial, so just a single thing multiplied in. We can also distribute a binomial, so a two-term thing, by distributing each term. After we distribute, we must always simplify by combining like terms. Just like we were doing yesterday with our addition problems, combining our like terms at the end means that any any term that has the same variable to the same exponent power gets added together. So you can see here I've already kind of outlined what that looks like for distribution of a binomial. We're taking and distributing my x into all three and then we also distribute our bottom or two into all three. So that's what, ooh, let's do this. That's what that is right there. So then these three multiplications happen from our blue distribution arrows. X multiplied into all three of those. And then these three multiplications happen with our two being distributed. That's our red arrows. So when we do that, I'm going to use green for combining them together. X times X squared is X cubed. X times 3X is 3X squared. X times 5 is 5X. 2 times X squared is 2X squared. 2 times 3X is 6X. 2 times 5 is 10. And then from there, I would collect up my like terms. So I'm going to do that just in black. Um, so X squared with X squared x with x and then our first and last terms there don't have anything in common so in total we have x cubed plus 5x squared plus 11x plus 10 and that would be my final simplification for multiplying those two together so let's do a couple of practice problems here i've just got two of them we've got three times Two, or sorry, times x plus 2, 3 times x is 3x, three, 3 times 2 is 6, there we go, nothing to worry about com combining like terms wise for that one, so that's nice. Okay, down below for number 2, I've got to distribute my 3x into both of them, so 3x times x squared is 3x cubed, 3x times 5 is 15x. 4 times x squared is 4x squared. 4 times 5 
is 20. In this case, none of them are like terms. They all have different exponent variable or exponents on them. So I'm just going to rearrange this so it's in standard form. 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus 15x plus 20. There we go. So if you notice here, that, that multiplication that we just did, a binomial times a binomial, so a 2 times 2, 2 terms times 2 terms, we had to multiply this 3x into my first term, and then my second term, and then my 4 into my first term and my second term. That multiplication process, a 2 term thing times a 3, a two, sorry, a 2 by 2, 2 terms times 2 terms, is something we use quite often. So often, in fact, that we have a, an acronym, kind of a reminder of ourselves of what we have to multiply by because we do it so often. So you've probably heard of foiling. Maybe a previous math teacher has taught you about foiling things together. FOIL, F-O-I-L, is a shortcut or kind of just a, it's really a reminder system just for a way for us to remember all the different multiplications that have to happen. Because when you have two terms times two terms, we have four different multiplications that need to happen. If you want to use it, awesome. If this helps you remember foiling, we have F stands for multiplying our first terms together. O stands for our outside terms. I stands for inside terms. And then the L is for last. So when we go through and multiply those together, our firsts are this multiplication right here. First terms, for, like the first term in each parenthesis. So F for, uh, in FOIL, X times X, X squared. Outside is these two. So our outside two are the furthest apart. X times negative four is negative four X. Our insides is this right here, 3 times my x, so positive 3x. And then my last is the last in each parenthesis. Positive 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And then we have our like terms here that happen right here in the middle. Negative 4 and positive 3x gives me a total of negative 1x. Oops, 12. So that's what foiling looks like. Again, if you want to use that that acronym, sure. If it helps you remember it, go for it. Otherwise, this is really just double distribution. In fact, some teachers I don't remember what, what I don't remember what Miss Vinard usually does, um, or you know, depending on who you had in the past, Miss Salazar last year, Miss Faye this year for my eighth graders. Um, some math teachers don't like the foiling method because it's only specific to two by two. So they go with more what's called double distribution. It doesn't really matter to me on what happens in your brain. However, you need to think about it or frame it. That's fine with me. As long as everything gets multiplied with everything, I'm good to go. So if we're going to go ahead and foil these two example problems here, X. So first, x cubed outsides 9x squared insides x last 9 and hey look at that I even did it using our FOIA method and we already have it in standard form very nice okay so for number four once again firsts x squared Outsides, positive 5x. Insides, negative 5x. And lasts, negative 25. Now in this case, my two like terms in the middle end up giving me 0x. So I don't have to write that term at all. I would just have x squared minus 25. And that's okay. That is an option for us. We could have terms that just cancel out. Um, that's something we'll get into later in the chapter. This is a special relationship between our two binomials. This is a, a special multiplication shortcut we'll be covering in a, in a later section. 
But for right now, all we need to know is that x squared minus 25 is my final simplification. All right. Um, so last but not least, this is another way of organizing uh, our multiplication. Uh, I used to call this the table method. I need to update this. This is what I call box multiplication. B-O-X, box multiplication. Um, for those of you who are in biology or who have done this in the past, this looks, this box multiplication looks a lot like uh, Punnett squares in science class. So if you guys have done any kind of genetics, you've probably done Punnett squares in the past. Um, you might have done this upstairs in middle school. You might be doing it right now in science, but um, it's a way for us to just organize ourselves to multiply things out for those who like having things a little bit more visually organized. So it's also really useful when we have really large polynomials. So like when we have more than just a two by two, maybe we have a two term, a, a, you know, a binomial times a trinomial or two trinomials being multiplied together. It's just a way for us to multiply a little bit more kind of spatially, you know, a little more spaced out. So this is what multiple, uh, table multiplication, which again, box multiply looks like for 2x minus 1 times x plus 5. So what I do is I make a little box here. So the way that I would usually do this, I'm just going to draw this part of it, and then I label the other stuff on the outside. So I'm going to change my color here. Let's do blue so you can see. There we go. So I then just label each term of my original two polynomials get multi or get ri uh, labeled as either the label to a column or a row. So we can see 2x minus 1. My first column is 2x. My second column is negative 1. And then my two rows are my other term, x plus 5, x and 5. And the way this box multiplication works is in each of these four rectangles here, each of these four boxes, whatever two pieces intersect each other, I multiply together to get that box. So for this top left corner, I'm going to multiply x times 2x. And when I multiply those together, I get 2x squared. So that's what goes in this box. In my top right corner, negative 1 times x gets multiplied together. So negative 1x or just negative x. My bottom left corner, 2x times 5 gives me 10x. And then my bottom right corner, 5 times negative 1 gives me negative 5. So then to get my answer to find the simplified solution, I would just collect my like terms inside my box. Now the nice thing is here, this diagonal right here should be where we have like terms. They kind of happen diagonally. So I have those two terms that have just x in it. So I'm going to have to collect those like terms when I write my solution. So I should end up with 2x squared, a total of 9x, because that's 10 minus 1, and then minus 5. So that would be my solution. That would be how I would multiply 2x minus 1 times x plus 5 using the box multiplication method. So we're going to do a couple example and a couple extra ones here just to reinforce this. So for number five, if we were to multiply 3x minus 1 times x minus 4, I would go ahead and just set up a box. Let's try and make an actual box. Yep, there we go. We have 2 by 2, so 3x minus 1, x minus 4. And then I'm just going to go ahead and multiply where they intersect. 3x times x is 3x squared. Negative 1 times x is negative x. 3x times negative 4 is a negative 12x. And then negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4. So my solution when I collect up my like terms, 3x squared minus 13x plus 4. There we go. Now, that probably is a little bit of extra work for just a 2x2. Two two. Um, you, you know, I 
am one who prefers just foiling things out or just doing some double distribution. Where I do find it useful and where I, I personally still use uh, box multiplication is where we have more complex or larger polynomials being multiplied together. So here with number six, with this last one, we can see we have a two-termed thing by a three-termed thing. So the way that I'm going to have to adjust my, my box of this box multiplication, I have to make sure I have enough columns and rows. So it doesn't matter which way you orient it. I usually will go with the longer one uh, uh, as number of columns. So in this case, I have a two-term thing times a three-term thing. So I have to make sure I have a two by three box to make sure I have enough spaces to fill in. So we can see here my x squared minus seven x plus five. I'm gonna put that as my label on my columns going across the top. And then my x minus one will be still my labels for my rows going down the side. So that's what I just mean. You could flip this so it would be two wide and three tall. That's fine. It doesn't really matter the orientation. It's more so just making sure that each term you have a column or a row individually for. So now x times x for this top left corner. x times x squared is x cubed. Bottom left corner, x squared times negative one, negative x squared. My top middle is negative 7x times x, so that's a negative 7x squared. Bottom middle, negative 7x times negative 1 is a positive 7x. x times 5 for my top right corner is 5x. 5 times negative 1 for my bottom right corner is negative 5. Now, Again, the benefit of box multiplication, even when you have something complex like this, my diagonals should still show me my like terms. They, sh they should always be diagonal from each other. So when I write up my solution here, uh, I can see my x cubed doesn't have any like terms to collect with, so it's going to stay as is. I have negative 1 and negative 7 x squared, so that should be a total of negative 8 x squared, I like that too, let's read right that, there we go, our x terms, we've got 7 and 5 for a total of 12x, and then my negative 5 stays as is. All right, that is it for 7.2's notes. Uh, homework is down there in the bottom right corner of your notes, as well as on the screen here. Your homework is on page 369, number 4 through 30 just the evens as always if you guys have any questions concerns thoughts ideas hopes or dreams make sure you guys are reaching out and let me know and we'll see you soon have a great day